Today I'm going to be reviewing some concepts of polynomials that we learned about in grade 9, such as multiplying monomials, dividing monomials, and the distributive property. Uh, and the first concept I would like to begin with is power laws. So we learned that we can use power laws when we have the same base and there's either a multiplication sign, a division sign, or something called a power of a power. So for example, if I had a question that looked like this, x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 5, you're going to notice that both the bases are the same, they're both x's, which means we can go ahead and use our power laws and it's going to remain an x. And then you're going to add the exponents together. So 3 plus 5 is 8, and that would be our final answer. Whoops. For the second type of power law, um, if I had an example like x to the power of 6 divided by x to the power of 2, Again, you're going to notice that both of our bases are the same, but when you have a division sign, you're going to be subtracting the exponent. So 6 take away 2 is, will be a 4. And the third power law that you should be familiar with is a power of a power, and it looks like this. And for a question like this, what you're going to do is you're going to take both the exponents and just multiply them together. So this would actually give us an x to the power of 12. Now, using these power laws, we can answer a whole variety of questions, and I have a couple of examples for us to do. So, if we take a look at example number one, we have a monomial, another monomial, and when there's no sign and you have two brackets like that, it means it is actually a multiplication sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both these monomials together, and I always begin by looking at my coefficients, so these two numbers over here. Negative 4 and times 3, which is going to give us negative 12. Then we can start looking at the exponents. So we have x to the power of 2 times x to the power of, if there's no number, you can just put in a 1. So using our power laws, both of these bases are the same. So I'm going to have an x for sure. And then we have a 2 and a 1. We're going to add those together, and it's going to give us x to the power of 3. We do the same thing with the y, so we have y to the power of 1 over here times y to the power of 3. The bases are the same, which means our answer will have that base as well, and we're going to add the exponents, so 1 plus 3 is going to give us 4, and our final answer will be negative 12, x to the power of 3, and y to the power of 4. Let's move on to our second example. We have two monomials here that are divided. And so to answer this question, once again, I begin by looking at my coefficients. So I'm going to look at the numbers without any of the letters first. 20 divided by negative 5, we're lucky because these divide and give us a whole number. But even if they didn't, you would just simplify the fraction and leave the answer as a fraction. Next, we move on to our variables. So we have x to the power of 3. I'm just going to get rid of that x to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of 2. So thinking back to our power laws, we have an x, and now we're going to be subtracting our exponents, so 3 take away 2 will be x to the power of 1. You don't need to write down the 1. Anytime there's an exponent of 1, you can just leave it um, blank, but I'm going to write it down just so you can visualize what's happening. And then we have y to the power of 4 divided by y to the power of 2. Our bases are y's. 4 take away 2 is 2, and so our final answer will be negative 4x, y to the power of 2. All right, example number 3. So here you can see we have a binomial in brackets, another binomial over here with a subtraction sign. And the way I like to explain this is, whenever I have any numbers inside brackets, I like to think of them as those numbers are trapped inside the bracket, you can't move them around or do anything until the brackets disappear. And in order for us to get rid of the brackets, we need to use something called distributive property. Um, now, usually, there's a number, actually not usually, sometimes there's a number in front of the bracket. If there is no number in front of the bracket, it's no big deal. We know that means it's a 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write the 1 in. And in order to help you visualize what's happening, you're basically going to be taking that 1 and you are going to be multiplying it to both of the terms inside of the bracket. Once the bracket ends, then you stop using that number and you go on to the next one. This one over here would be negative 1 times 2x squared 
and negative 1 times negative 3. So let's go ahead and try doing that. Okay, so the first part would be 1 times x squared. We're lucky because when you're multiplying anything by a 1, we know it stays the same, which means this is going to remain in x squared. And then 1 times positive 4 is going to be plus 4. We move on to this next part. Negative 1 times 2x squared will be negative 2x squared. And negative 1 times negative 3 is going to be positive 3. Now, when we reach a string of terms like this, uh, we gather our like terms before we start solving. So I'll show you how we do that. Um, the way I like to think about it is I look at my first term, which is an x squared, and I ask myself, do any of the other terms look like x squared? And you can clearly see that negative 2x squared does look like x squared. So those two are like terms. And then we have a positive 4, and positive 3 looks like positive 4. They're both constants. So for my next step, I'm going to gather up these like terms, and I'm going to put them together. So we have x squared minus 2x squared plus 4 plus 3. Now at this stage you can go ahead and add your add or subtract your like terms together. So the first two positive 1x squared minus 2x squared is going to give us negative 1x squared and positive 4 plus 3 is going to give us positive 7. Once you determine that you can't add an x squared and a 7 together because they are unlike terms, you are done the question and you can draw a box around it. For our last example, we have once again two brackets with terms inside of it and we have terms outside the bracket as well. So we're going to go ahead and use the distributive property to get rid of the bracket and we are going to begin with the first 3x. So we're going to take that 3x and multiply it to the very first term. The way I think about this is I first like to multiply my numbers, my coefficients, and then I deal with the variables. So technically there is a 1 over here, um, and so I'm going to multiply 3 times 1, which gives me a 3, and x times x, same base so you're using your power laws, you just add the exponents, it's going to give us an x squared. We move on to the second term, so 3x times negative 2. Again, begin with the coefficient. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then we have an x times no x over here. So the easiest way to think about this is you just glue the x to the negative 6, but the more accurate explanation is technically next to the 2 you have an x to the power of 0. And so because that will give you a 1, and so when you add a 1 plus 0 together, it gives you x to the power of 1. But if that seems a little bit complicated, the easiest way to remember this is you just go ahead and glue the number together. Sorry, the variable to the number. We're going to move on to the second bracket, so we have negative 2x times 2x. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, x times x is x squared. And then these two terms, negative 2 times positive 5 is negative 10. x times, if there's no letter here, we're just going to stick that x to the 10. Again, we're going to collect like terms. And as you guys get better at these questions, you don't really have to draw shapes and um, do this step. This was more grade 9 work. But while you're practicing, if it helps, then go ahead and do it. So 3x squared minus 4x squared are both like terms and negative 6x minus 10x are like terms. So when I add the numbers together, I'm adding those two pairs. 3 take away 4 is negative 1x squared. Negative 6x minus 10x is negative 16x. You cannot add these together any further. They're unlike terms, so that would be our final answer.